Hey 49ers fans, before we start today's video, if you have not subscribed to the 49ers Report, we're trying to get a thousand new subs just going through this week here on the 49ers Report. Listen, you're stuck at home, you're bored, we're still working for you, trying to give you guys the most up-to-date and latest 49er news as we are in a very important time right now as the draft is really just a couple of weeks away at the end of April. Before we continue on with, it, with the video, join the notification squad, the Noti Gang as we call it here at Chat Sports, because apparently only 19.3% of our subscribers have the notification bell turned on. That means there's almost 80% of you who are not notified whenever we drop the latest video. So join the notification game by going down, clicking the notification bell right next to the red subscribe button. If you've not hit the red subscribe button, well, click that first and then click the notification gang. That way you guys are notified whenever we drop the latest 49ers news and rumors videos here, which is like every single day on the channel. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, let's go ahead and start with the latest news coming out of San Francisco revolving Joe Staley and how the starting left tackle in 2020 might not be him. So remember all the way back at the Super Bowl, whenever Staley, after losing, said, guys, I plan on coming back. I'm hungry. I'm fine. I got two years left on my deal. And we all said, okay, Staley's going to be there. Left tackle's going to be okay. Apparently, that's starting to change right now as Joe Staley, who will be 36 years old in August, is kind of leaning towards retiring right now. And the Athletic is saying it's a 50-50 chance on him coming back this season, not next season, this season in 2020. So apparently the Super Bowl loss really hurt Staley to the point that he was seen inside the 49ers training facilities basically every single day after the loss trying to get ready for the 2020 season, wanting to be better and wanting to play a full 16-game schedule. Well, 49ers, of course, had to close down their, uh, their their facilities due to the current events that are happening in and around the world back in March, or earlier on in March, about mid-March, I should say. So there's starting to be some rumors circulating that he's kind of enjoying not going to work every single day and still working out, but it's a 50-50 chance if he's actually going to go ahead and play with the 49ers in 2020. He might just go ahead and retire. Now, if he were to retire, and again, 50-50 chance means pretty good odds he does not play in 2020, then the 49ers have a major hole on their offense. The biggest hole on the entire team will shift from wide receiver or corner or D-line. It will then become left tackle because, as we'll talk about in a second here, the depth chart for the 49ers is not that great. This all stems from the athletic talking about this whole 50-50 chance idea. Matt uh, Mayoko I was the one who was originally uh, sourced this saying he thinks it's a very, very long, it's a kind of a long shot that Staley is going to play and later on he was kind of talking about how the 49ers need to address replacing him now in a quote saying, quote, even if he does, and that is come back for one more year, he's not going to be around too much longer. Locking down the left side of that offensive line the 49ers really have to, have to excuse me, the 49ers have really have to start taking some steps in order to make sure that once he leaves. So that means that if Staley does not come back, then I think the whole draft might shift a little bit in terms of needing to get an offensive lineman. Because look, look at the 49ers depth chart right now at tackle. So Staley and McGlinchey are your two starters right and left. School's your backup, and then I guess Sean Coleman is gonna be your backup backup left tackle, your third string left tackle right now, if worse came to worse. But obviously San Francisco does not want to get that bad. Now, Justin School, obviously last year, did come in and fill in during the multiple injuries from Joe Staley and played well in the beginning and kind of got worse as it carried on. And then Staley got back to his left tackle spot and resumed, you know, his, his, his greatness that he always does at left tackle. But I think that that depth chart right now, because McGlinchey will stay at the right tackle, shows that San Francisco's got to add depth. Now, trading for a left tackle, maybe Trent Williams out of Washington could be an option if you could somehow pry him out of there. Although, of course, they said they didn't want to trade him and then they might trade him and then he's too expensive. Let's just go ahead and rule out Trent Williams. I don't see that one happening. So you take number 13 overall. <coughs> We were to take number 31 overall and spend it on an offensive lineman. It's not a sexy pick. It's not the pick that we would want as fans because we want a, you know, a cool wide receiver or a great pass rusher or a good D tackle or something like that. But there are some good options in terms of the tackles. We'll throw them up on your screen right now here. You got Jed Jedrick Wills is probably the number one overall tackle coming out of Alabama. Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa is also going to be a top 10 pick. And they're saying Makai Becton out of Louisville is also going to be a top 10 guy. The question will be, is Andrew Thomas a top 10 guy as well out of Georgia? He will most likely be a teen pick or an early 20 pick, but those three, Willsworths and Becton, are all probably going to go ahead and go inside the top 10. Now, if one of them were to fall, let's say that Worfs from Iowa decides to fall or Makai Becton falls out of the top 10, they will be there at number 13 because the Jets probably aren't going to take an offensive lineman, and the Raiders probably won't take an offensive lineman either at 12 or 13, meaning... 
you could have your pick at one of the better tackles in the drafts at number 13 overall, and then maybe you spend 31 on a wide receiver. The whole reason I'm talking about this first is this is going to change exactly how the first round of the NFL draft is going to go because the Niners cannot get tackles later on in the draft unless they want to get a fifth, a sixth, or a seventh round draft pick based on the current picks that they have. And if they're just going to do that, then go ahead and start Justin School because he was a fifth round pick last year and is not going to be a rookie. So, I don't want things to change. I hope Staley returns. I think he probably will if I had to bet my money on it because he does seem hungry. I want to go ahead and make another run at a Super Bowl. But with that being said, I want to put this in your guys' mind right now as we go ahead and start this week as we get closer to the NFL Draft. Don't be surprised if it's offensive linemen, if it's even an offensive lineman who won't even play in 2020 to be the backup future behind Joe Staley. It's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens with that going forward. Quick ad break here on YouTube. I want you guys to answer the pinned comment. Very curious how you guys feel about this. Should the 49ers draft a tackle at 13 overall? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. Also, if you guys want to go ahead and pick up the same draft hats that our 49er draftees, the rookies, will actually be wearing when they virtually walk across the stage. So it's still going to get them mailed to them. Don't worry. It's the 49er draft hat, and we have a ton of them on sale right now at chatsports.com slash 49 draft. This is the official one. Let me tell you, it looks a lot better than the ones they've had the past couple of years. This is a sweet draft hat overall. I myself might pick up one of these. Chatsports.com slash 49 draft is the place to go ahead and get yourself one. It's in the, it's in the description box right now. Go ahead and check those out. Now, moving on. Other news happening right now. Apparently, a lot of teams were very interested in trading for Nick Mullins, the current backup quarterback in San Francisco, to the point that more teams were interested in trading for Nick Mullins than Cam Newton, according to multiple reports, including The Athletic. So Mullins, of course, remember, back in 2018, Jimmy G tears the ACL. I think it was week three. In comes CJ Beathard. Beathard was 0-6 as a starter. In comes Nick Mullins in week nine and played pretty darn well. Now, he's a backup quarterback, so it's obviously he didn't, you know, ball out of his mind or else he would probably be the starting quarterback right now, but still showed he's one of the better serviceable backups in the National Football League. And we talked about it last year during the draft. The Niners might be looking to trade Nick Mullins, and it popped up this year again. And it turns out San Francisco did not and has not traded Nick Mullins, and it does not seem to be a... um. A thing that they're wanting to do right now is I would, I would argue he's probably one of the better backup quarterbacks in the National Football League. Michael Lombardi from The Athletic had this to say about the uh, about the trade, quote, 49ers got a bunch of phone calls. When I say a bunch, a couple of teams on Nick Mullins, the backup quarterback at San Francisco. Nick Mullins, they were asking about him and they turned down every trade offer for Nick Mullins. They wouldn't trade him. So I would guess a lot of teams went ahead and threw a fourth round draft pick, a fifth round draft pick, maybe a fourth and a future fifth, whatever it was to get Nick Mullins. And the Niners said, no, none of these offers are good enough to go for us to go ahead and trade him. I guarantee you, if a team would have offered a second, a first, or even a third for Nick Mullins, they probably would have done the deal. So when you see the 49ers are not trading Nick Mullins at all. That means they're not trading him for the normal backup quarterback's price right now in terms of a fourth, fifth, or sixth round draft pick. I would guarantee you if the team was like, hey, we'll give you a second for Nick Mullins, they would do that in a heartbeat. But obviously, no team has won ahead and done that. I like keeping Nick Mullins. Now, if I'm Nick Mullins, I kind of want to go see if I can compete for a starting drop somewhere else. But if he's happy in San Francisco, then I'm happy to have him. He is one of the better backup quarterbacks in the National Football League right now. C.J. Beathard would be serviceable, but I'd be feel a lot more comfortable, let's say, his week 15. And heaven forbid Jimmy Garoppolo blew his ACL again and the Niners were going to be in the playoffs. Nick Mullins would give you the best chance of to win versus all the other quarterbacks. So you would go ahead and sign up the free agent market as late as week 15 would be in this, you know, worst case scenario. It is interesting that Nick Mullins seems more... I guess, uh, intriguing to be a backup quarterback somewhere else than Cam Newton right now goes to show that Cam Newton's uh, overall, uh, I guess, starting quarterback prospects right now are not very good. But that is not, well, this channel's not called the Carolina Report. It's just called the 49er Report. So we'll go back to more 49er news here right now. Let me ask you guys this. Who should, uh, what should the 49ers do with Nick Mullins? T for trade, K for keep. I would keep him unless the trade was really, really good. But I'm curious what you guys think here. Type T down below for trade. Type K down below for keep. Also, we are less than 1,000 subs away from 20K subs right now. Let me say that again. We're less than 1,000 subs away from 20,000 subs here in the 49ers report. It's crazy. Help us get there. Remember to turn on your push notifications as well, the notification bell. That way you're notified whenever we drop our latest videos. We want you guys to join the notification gang because only like 19% of you guys actually are notified when our videos are dropped, which is not a lot. 19% of 20,000 is not as many as we'd like to have. So... Click the red subscribe button, click the notification bell as well. Finally here, 
George Kittle was being interviewed by First Take a couple of days ago because First Take and ESPN, like a lot of people, are very bored in terms of no debate topics right now. Now, we got plenty of topics here on the 49ers report, but Kittle was talking about how he is expecting to have similar success to the 2019 season in 2020 and talked about how San Francisco is going to get Jalen Hurd, Jarek McKinnon, and two new draft picks in the first round, meaning there's a lot of new weapons that San Francisco is going to have. Now, is Jalen Hurd going to be a number one wide receiver? No, but he's still going to be a very viable option. Look what Debo Samuel did in his first year. Hurd has had a whole year to kind of study the playbook and will get to come in alongside Debo Samuel and all the running game and all this sort of stuff. And a guy like Jerick McKinnon, who might not make a big impact, but also could be a surprise workhorse back out of the backfield if he is fully healthy for the 49ers as well. This all has Kittle, and I think it should have us as well. Very excited what San Francisco is looking to do. Kittle said, quote, on first take, we have great pit players. We have a great coaching staff. I think we have a great foundation to keep winning games. I think the hardest thing about football is figuring out how to win games. Last year, we won games in all shapes and all sizes and forms, whether it was 9-0 or in a shootout with Drew Brees, we found out ways to win. As long as we can keep doing that, I really don't see how we don't make it back. So it's a politically correct answer from Kittle because what is he supposed to say, right? He's supposed to say, well, duh, I think we're going to win next year. He's not going to say, oh, my goodness, we're going to suck next year. But still, I think he's on the right page here in terms of, yes, great team, great coaches. They figured out how to win. And the team in and of itself is basically the same minus a couple of no-name departures, a couple of small signings here and there, and then the one big departure to Forrest Buckner. But you get a first-round draft pick. So they're going to be adding picks here who rookies, maybe they have a massive impact. Maybe they don't. We'll have to wait and see. I think overall, the 49ers are going to be great this year. I'm curious what you guys think. Predict the 49ers record in 2020. Now we're going to flash the schedule. And we've talked about the schedule here and how this first place schedule, it's tough, but I still think San Francisco, even in probably the best of fit, the best division in the NFC, in terms of the, of the NFC West, I think they're still a 10 to 11 win football team. And I think they are for sure going to go to the postseason. But I'm curious, give me a record prediction down below. Don't type 16 and 0. Don't be that guy. We're not going to go 16 and 0. Give me a realistic record prediction based on the home and away games you guys have seen on your screen as it scrolled through here on the 49ers report. There you go. I want to jump into a Monday here as you guys are probably bored. You're sitting at home with the latest 49er news in terms of Joe Staley. That one's the big one that happened over the weekend. Will he stay? Will he go? I'll have to wait and see what happens over the next couple of days and weeks. I doubt he will have a decision tomorrow, but I wouldn't be surprised if San Francisco tries to pressure him into his decision before the NFL draft. That way, the team knows if they need to go offensive line at number 13 overall or not. Uh, we did not trade away Nick Mould, which is good news, I think, for a lot of us. And finally, George Kittle predicts a very successful, very similar 2020 season to the 2019 season as well. All the time we have for today on the 49ers Report, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.